Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for this day of days, this time of times. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to say here this morning and what you're going to do here in every heart. We thank you, great and wonderful person of the Holy Spirit, who will do all the work here today. Father, we give you all the glory. Jesus, we thank you that you've made all this possible through your death, your obedience in death and your resurrection. And we receive resurrection life in everything that is said and done today. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, hello to everybody. It's so wonderful to be back. It seems just like yesterday that we were here. And uh, Pastor John called me just before I left and said, uh, please send my love to everybody, Pastor Pat. Jim, Pastor Mark and Kelly and all the wonderful people here. He wishes he was here, but he's in South Africa. And uh, he's actually on a very special trip right now. It was his birthday on Monday and uh, he's had a dream to do this photographic safari. And just God just made it possible for him this year. So he's on this photographic safari in the Okavango in Namibia. And um, they drive in vehicles that have got swivel chairs. And they've got all the Nikon, um, the hydraulic lift uh, of the stand. And then these big Nikon cameras, you know, that you see. Just these lenses like this. So the, they provide all of that. And this has been... Just, I wouldn't say a lifelong dream, but almost. <laughs> almost a lifelong dream. And so this was his time. And you know, the Lord's been preparing us for a couple of years now. The Lord has spoken very clearly to Pastor John and very clearly to me that there would come a time where he would travel to America without me and I would travel to America without him. Because we have churches in South Africa so Pastor John is called to be an apostle. He is an apostle. He, um, we have several churches. We have Bible schools, several Bible schools in Southern Africa. He is called to South Africa and Southern Africa. And so um, then, of course, supernaturally, the Bible school started as well in Tampa, Florida. And last year when we were fasting and praying, uh, the Lord spoke very clearly to us through Scripture because... Um, an apostle is a sent one, sent to specific places in the earth with specific messages, carrying specific seed for the body of Christ. And uh, if an apostle is going to follow the Lord properly, he cannot go where he wants to go. He has to go where the Lord sends him. And so we wanted to just make sure about this door in America that had opened to us, we always sensed that the Lord would, call, would, would, would have us bring what we're carrying to America, but we wanted to make sure. And then the Lord gave us that scripture that he gave the Apostle Paul of his day as well, that he has opened up the door, a great and effectual door for service, and there are many adversaries. So when God sends a man or a woman to a place, there will be adversity because the adversary will want to come against. And that, but we are not ignorant of his devices. And uh, really, um, uh, he is defeated. He is a defeated foe. And uh, we are here on divine, I am here on divine assignment. I was just sharing with Pastor Pat and um, 
that last Saturday morning I did a Woman's Day uh, in a, our Woodbank Church, which is about an hour and a half from Johannesburg in South Africa. And uh, as I always do when I have a woman's weekend away or I have a woman's conference, I always ask the man of God to come and open it and bring his, bring what is on his heart for the day and bring that release for the day or for the weekend. And so this was the first time that this had even happened to me, although um, Pastor John and I have spoken. Obviously, we've been married 33 years, and we've been in the ministry for uh, many of those years. And um, so we've spoken about these things privately, about the, you know, the things that God shows me. Whenever God shows me things about what He's called me to do, I always share it with Him to get the witness of the Spirit. But this Saturday morning, it's the first that I've ever had this happen to me. Uh, I just got up to get onto the pulpit because I wanted to share with the woman how important this day was. The Lord said to me to call girls from the age of nine years old and women to this meeting because Kenneth e. Hagen talks about the age of accountability kind of starting around about the age of nine. And so... Um, he wanted the nine-year-old girls there, and it was really such a meeting. Uh, the Lord had me explain to these. We had we must have we had teenagers. We had from the age of nine upwards. Even some young girls wanted to come that were earlier, and it was an appointment with God for them, because the Lord had me explain to them what the age of accountability is. The age of accountability is when you get to the age where you understand whether you are following Jesus through your choice or you are following the ways of the world. Whether you are choosing Jesus, or whether you are choosing something else. That's when you know. Some people have said that age of accountability is around right about the age of 12, because Jesus was in his father's house, knew he was supposed to be about his father's business, was surprised that his mom and dad didn't see that as well at that strategic time of his life. Um, but uh, Kenneth e. Hagen, says, who is my spiritual father, um, says that it can be as early as nine years old, where a child knows. And so God was calling those young girls. But as I got up, just to explain how serious this was, and I told the mothers, don't drag your kids along with you. This is for the young women, the young girls that want to be there. This is not for you to say, they, they've got to want to be there. They've got to recognize that this is a divine appointment for their lives. And they've got to be ready to receive from the Lord. So I got up because I saw there were a number of eight, nine, 10 year olds, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds there. And um, uh, uh, I just was encouraging them and speaking to them about the seriousness of the day. And the Spirit of God fell on my husband. That's the only way I can explain it to you. He described it to me afterwards. He said the, sp the Spirit realm opened up and God began to show him many things about my ministry and my assignment in the earth at this time. And he began to prophesy these things Oh, my glasses are in my white um, glass case in my bag, Christy. And this is what he began to say. And this is significant for me to share this with you today because this is my first place that I'm coming to after the release from the man of God. Thank you, Christy. So I want to put you in the picture of where you are. Prophetic word from... Pastor John to Pastor Sharon, because you have honored your husband, because you have honored and lived the word as a wife, as a partner in ministry, because you have been co-laborer in the ministry with your husband, today God is speaking through the authority that is in your life. He is declaring over you that the time and the season for incremental release of your ministry on an international and global scale happens now. 
It is fitting that the Holy Spirit has me here today to clear this over you before you fly without me. The Lord says that many things will happen not only on this trip, but on many trips around the world where God is going to raise your voice globally. He is going to raise your voice. Now, this raising of the voice is not for people to be impressed. I'm not reading this word to you for you to be impressed by it or for you to think that I am anything because I am nothing and Jesus is everything. But it's to put you in the picture so that when God begins to raise my voice here today, it is for you. It is for you. When he speaks, it is for you. It is for your victory in your life. Thank you. When Jesus came to the earth and there came a time that his words were with weight and with authority, it was for the people. Yes. Yes. It is not. And the reason I need to speak to you about this is because if you relate properly to me, the Holy Spirit will be pleased and he will really pour himself out here today. You see? He doesn't want you sitting there going, Wow, oh, this person from South Africa, gee, she speaks with authority. No, no. He wants you going. I recognize God at work here through this vessel, sent her from South Africa on assignment, released by her authority, by the man of God in her life, for such a time as this. This is the first place that I'm coming to after this release. That is significant. Amen. Because Pastor Jim and Pastor Pat, are, we are divinely connected to them. Pastor John and I are divinely connected to them. Now, if you come from another church, then you can receive the things that I'm saying today for you where you are planted. Mm -hmm. But this is really for the people that, that it, it will be for you too. I'm not saying if you're not from this church, but really for the people that are from this church. This is house business, household business of God here today. This is for the people that know they have been called with Pastor Jim and Pastor Pat. And then, of course, if you're visiting, it will apply for you where you are planted. Okay. I must de declare this publicly. Indeed, the Father has called you to be an activator of His Spirit. Indeed, the Father has called you to teach people of the truth of the Holy Spirit and the Word. And He has called you to release and launch seeds of prayer, people of prayer, everywhere you go. It is the mandate of our ministry and it is your mandate to go and fulfill that around the world. I release you, Sharon, into the mighty things of God. Now, like I said, the mighty things of God are for you. I release you, Sharon, into the mighty things of God. I release you into the pathways that you must walk in, internationally, into all the places that God will take your feet. God has taken my feet here today because He has got a divine appointment with you. There's a work He's going to do in you. There's a word he's going to speak to you. There's going to be an activation that's going to happen in you. And you are going to be transformed. And you are going to be walking like never before in a new level of authority in your personal life. Because it is authority for victory that God is after. God is after you to have victory in your life like never before. God is a sore loser. In fact, God never loses. But when his kids lose, when his kids are robbed, when his kids are defeated, when his kids are not overcoming, it just gets under his skin. Because he has created you and I for authority, for victory. And God told me to say this and state this very specifically today. It is for personal victory. Very personal victory. And for corporate victory. Amen. 
You cannot separate who you are personally, and God is intimately uh, concerned and involved with all of the things that concern your personal life, your personal finances, your personal relationships, your children, very personal to Him, your family life, very personal to Him, your, your, your like I said, your financial life, your health, very personal to Him. God is a very up close and personal God. So God wants me to state to you today that He is here about your personal authority for your personal victory today. But He is also very definitely wanting me to speak out today that there will be corporate authority in this house, in this legitimate place on this earth, in this area. Mm -hmm. There will be corporate authority released through the power of prayer that mm -hmm. will bring about corporate mm -hmm. victory like never before. Mm -hmm. Corporate victory, what is that? That is the things that God has predestined, the things that God has prophesied to come to pass through this redemptive work in this church and in this house. It is time for the fullness and the fatness and the abundance Amen. of that yes. now. Yes. Amen. And God is after us to have victory. Yes. He is actually obsessed with our victory. Yes. And He's not going to stop. He doesn't want us to stop until we have the complete personal victory and the corporate victory. Yes. But it's going to be released through our obedience to the Word of God, but it's going to be released through prayer. I'm talking about prayers of authority for victory. All right, I'll get into that just now. Sharon, I release you into the mighty things of God. I release you. Okay. Where is this? Where was I? Seeds of prayer, people of prayer, everywhere you go. It is the mandate of our ministry. I release you, Sharon, into the mighty things of God, into the pathway, into all the places God will take your feet. I release you in Jesus' name. Those signs and wonders that God has been talking to you about, as the head of the ministry, I release you. The way God will use you will be just the way that He uses you. Today is the timing of of God. So I, I, I sense the weight of that because God works through His authority channels. And I realized um, that this is God's pattern for release. I, I know that from God's Word because it was in the book of Acts that as the fivefold ministry were ministering unto the Lord and fasting, that the Holy Ghost said, Separate for me, Paul and Barnabas, unto the ministry where I have, unto I have sent them. And so I am a person under authority, therefore I am also very definitely a person in authority. And many people are, many people are not sent according to God's pattern, but they went anyway. And you can go and read about that in Jeremiah 23, where God says they went but I never said. They went, they speak for me, and God says in Jeremiah 23, I'm actually against them. So just because you have somewhat of an anointing and you are somewhat called by God does not mean you can go anywhere you want to go and think you are pleasing God. Mm. His gifts and callings are without repentance. So you may flow in your giftings and you may flow in your callings. And you may say, but in your name I cast. In your name, in your name, look what I did. And Jesus will say, well, I didn't know you in that. Mm. We weren't together in this. Mm. You didn't talk to me. I didn't talk to you. I didn't give you instruction in this. You didn't, I didn't know you in all this. So these things these days are very important. Because... There's been a shift in the spirit a couple of years ago and that's going to begin to manifest now in the church and you will see that the things that people have been able to get away with 
in the past, they will not get away with them anymore because it is the time of God. This is closer to the end times than we've ever been before and the Lord is coming, coming back for a glorious church. Which means it will be a church that is in order. It will be a church where the leaders are in order, where they are listening to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said this. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against that kind of church. So now where Jesus is not able to build his church is not where he is building. Very important for us. Can I see the hands of those who know the name of a gentleman in the body of Christ called John Bivia? He writes a book undercover and he says it's very dangerous for you to go and belong to a church that is not legitimate. For you and your family, very dangerous for you to do that. And I'm here today to speak to you about that because God wants you undercover so that you can be covered. He wants you under the right legitimate authority so that you can be in authority for victory for your life like never before. Because the good news is that when you have been led by the Holy Spirit to a place where the Lord Jesus Christ wants you and you are planted there, then you are under authority there and you will be in authority for your personal life for victory like never before. And the true authorities of the Lord Jesus Christ are not those who lord it over God's people. All they do is God's called them there, God sent them there, and they just stand. They may never even tell you anything ever to do, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, ever. But your heart either submits there or it doesn't. And the body of Christ, the Lord said these words to me, said to me, Sharon, lawlessness in my body is highly contagious. My people think they can go wherever they want to go and they can do whatever they want to do. They can say whatever they want to say. And then when they want to be in authority to rule and reign as kings in love, then they wonder why there are no results. Because they are lawless. They are operating in the principle of lawlessness. And therefore they cannot be in authority in their own personal lives. But those that are planted in the house of the Lord. The Lord has, has planted people in legitimate places all over this world. They are going to, there's going to be a rising up of those people in authority for their personal lives, on behalf of their husbands, on behalf of their children, in the area of finances, in the area where the enemy is attacking their health. They're going to rise up with authority, with the authority of the Word of God and the authority in prayer. With the authority of the covenant of God in their mouths, the authority of the promises of God, the authority, the new will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ, better promises, better promises because of the strength of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews says we have a better covenant based on better promises. The Bible says that all of God's promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. But God said, Sharon, you've got to tell my people, they've got to understand some things about why they have been lacking in authority. Is because they have been lawless. They have been wandering around. They, he showed me the nomadic spirit of the Christians in, the, in this earth, in the body of Christ. They go to places in the earth. They go to leaders in the earth. They go to places in the earth through preference. Personal preference, he said to me. Comfort and convenience, but not by conviction of my Holy Spirit. So they never get planted. He said you can identify the lawless everywhere you go. They have their own language. They have their own attitude. They have their own talk. They gather together. The lawful and the lawless do not mix. The lawless, my time is up. My season is over. I'm out of here. 
This is a better something there. That's a better something there. And they are nomadic and they wander and wander and wander. W-A-N-D-E-R. They wander and wander so they always W-O-N-D-E-R. They always wonder why my prayers are not answered. I wonder why I'm not. I wonder why the devil is always stealing, killing and destroying. I wonder. I wonder because I W-A-N-D-E-R and I W-A-N-D-E-R and I don't Fine. Deuteronomy chapter 12 says, the Lord God says, now that you're going in the promised land, you shall seek the place which the Lord your God shall choose. And there you shall come. And there you shall bring. And there you shall eat. And there you shall rejoice. And there, you, it says, you and your children and your household. Amen. So God has got legitimate Amen. places all over this earth. And then there are illegitimate places. Amen. And God is pulling the wool off the eyes of his sheep. Amen. And they are going to see and they are going to know now like never before. Amen. And this place here is one of the legitimate places in the earth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is a legitimate house of the Lord. I am not going to be able to say that at every place, but I know that this is a legitimate Thank you. place in the earth. And so, because you are planted here, the good news for you today is you can work, walk now. God wants you to begin to walk now in a level of personal victory that you have never experienced before. Personal victory in every area of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then you are going to also be part of the corporate redemptive work that God is doing here. And you're going to throw your lot in with this as well. Because you cannot, you cannot differentiate and distinguish between who you are personally and who you are corporately because God has called us to be a body. Yes. He has called us to be a body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So, now, authority Oh, that's quarter to 12 already? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I must be done by when? You go. Three o'clock. I want, I want the word. You go. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So, authority for victory. Authority for victory. This was a, a, a prophetic word that came through Pastor John. Let me just see here. Um, let me just see if I can find this authority with full mm -hmm. victory. But part of that word mm -hmm. was, it is the time of God, church. Amen. It is the time of God. And God, the Holy Spirit, is orchestrating everything now on behalf of the Father. It is the time of God now like never before. That scripture in Isaiah that says, for a long time I've kept silent, but now, but now, this is the but now time of God. There has been a shift. People of God, precious people of God, there's been a shift. God has shifted the season and the time. You are not anymore in a season like you used to be in. If the enemy is wanting to tell you that things are still the same as they used to be, he's don't, you cannot afford, you cannot afford to think like that anymore. Because God has so fundamentally shifted everything for you and for me that we actually sh cannot afford to have any past reference points anymore keep cropping up in our lives. We cannot allow those past reference points to keep popping up and respond, I mean, and react and react and react because it's a new time. So God wants you to orientate yourself spiritually and find yourself what 
what is this like then now, Lord? So you've got to get used to how things have really changed for you and I. Because Daniel chapter 2 says God changes the seasons. And He has changed the season. And God gave this to Pastor John. It is a shift, church, for victory. Who's victory? God's victory? No. God's doing very well where He is. It's a shift for victory for us. Like never before. And you're going to find that if you let this word come into you, you'll find the Holy Spirit will so confirm it to you. Um, and you'll be, you're gonna, you are going to begin to rise up now like never before and not be defeated and tap the shift. You see... It's already happened. God's already brought it about. I'm just telling you that it's happened. I mean, you've got to tap it. You've got to tap it. Well, how do you tap it? Well, you've got to tap. You've got to get with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You've got to let Him That's right. keep telling you the same things over and over. It's shifted. It's changed. It's shifted. It's changed. It's for your victory. It's for your victory. It's for your victory. It's shifted. It's changed. It's for your victory. It's for your victory. I'm wanting you to be more than a conqueror now like never before. I'm telling you that my word says that you shall rule and, rule and reign as kings in this life. I'm telling you that when I created man, I said, I created them in my likeness and I said, and give them dominion and give them dominion and give them authority. Give them authority and give them dominion. Then I say in my word that I've given you all authority. Now you go, and in my name, the, all authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, that's why, oh, 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 I'm telling you, when I saw this in the spirit, how the lawless, the lawless are so defeated. They are so defeated, they are prey for the enemy, because he knows when God's people are lawful and when God's people are lawless. He knows that the lawless are powerless. To defeat him and deal with him on any level. The sons of Sceva were powerless to defeat the devil and deal with him on any level. In fact, the devil got all over them. Because you can go and read uh, and study that passage. They were, they were rebels. They were, they were lawless, but the lawful. Shh. People, I mean, this is the good news I'm coming to give this house today. The lawful. The Lord gave me this are awful. <laughs> really? And and I mean this with all absolute respect and reverence for the way the Lord gave me this. Awful. Okay, this is what the word awful means. Because I've never really... He said my lawful are awful, Sharon. So, this is what the word awful means. Causing fear, dread and terror. Alarming. Extreme in degree, extent, amount, or impact. Frightful, terrible, tremendous, extraordinary, amazing, or inspiring. Impressive. He said, my lawful, oh, awful. You know that we use that word, awesome. Now, I know our English has got that one negative thing about what awful is, you know. It's, but in the, it says here, archaic. The archaic meaning of the word awful is inspiring awe and wonder. Mm. That's who God has created you and I to be, is to be in authority and in dominion. To be walking in God's ways and to be absolutely awful because we're lawful. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. You've read those words, God is a great and terrible God. Yes. That's that awe-inspiring God. And He's created you and me in His likeness. Yes. In the book of Hebrews, He said, I have put all things <coughs> under, our, under man's control. He has crowned us with glory and honor. Yes. You see, God does not see like man sees. Yes. Ah, God's not impressed. With man's achievements and people in this world without God. He's not impressed with anything that happens in Hollywood. He's not impressed with any buildings, men, mankind. God actually...
actually is not involved in any of that stuff. God is only involved with his people and his church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So wherever God is, Jesus is building his church, there, those people that go to those places where God is building there, the gates of hell cannot prevail against their lives, people. The gates of hell cannot prevail against you personally. Hallelujah. And you've got to realize this, who you are. Who you are corporately and who you are personally. That this is not about coming to church and just learning Christianese and, you know, this is about... Jesus said, I am building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means you and me, we are the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you, personally. That word church that Jesus used there, I will build my church, is a Greek word, ecclesia. Do you know that the Greeks of the day knew exactly that word, what that word meant? Because it meant a group of people in a city or an area that were called out yes. to legislate yes. on behalf of the authority in that place. Amen. Yeah. Make decisions. Yeah. So when Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia, he was saying, I will build my people that are called out to legislate. Uh -huh. You are to legislate God's word in your life, people. Amen. You are to legislate. You are to call the shots personally. And then the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Will not prevail against your children. Will not prevail against your finances. Will not prevail against your marriage. Will not prevail against your husband. Will not prevail against your church. The gates of hell will not prevail. Which means that word means it will not overcome you. It will not have dominance over you because you're legislating. You're calling the shots. Legislation is to do with authority. Legislate. And you know what? You let the devil lie to you. You let the devil lie to you. You too young. You too ordinary. You too old. You too thin. You too fat. You too ugly, you two stupid things like that we let the devil lie to us about. Because we live in this natural world that dictates and says, if you're not this, that and that, you're nothing. And then we allow the prince of the power of this air, the prince of the of darkness of this world system to lie to us about stupid stuff like that. Stupid stuff like that to hold you back and hold you down? Because you didn't make it in this, in this business. You didn't make it financially. You didn't make it in the beauty pension. You didn't make it uh, 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 at school. You didn't make it in this worldly educational system. You didn't make it in the worldly business system. You just didn't make it. That world system belongs to the devil. It was never created with the Christians that were there in the beginning that set it up. They created, it was created for us to fail. And feel bad about ourselves. You're not going to, these stupid little lies that the devil lies to you, just to make sure just to make sure he can keep you where you are so that you do not rule and reign as a king in your personal life. Amen. You see, this is just the house you live in. Your spirit has been reborn, recreated in the image of God. Your spirit is powerful. Your spirit the real you is spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 
In the book of Thessalonians, it says that God will preserve you spirit, soul, and body. Spirit. The spirit is that which has been born again into the likeness of God. This is just the house, the temporary house that you live in. You only live in this house, people. But the spirit life is that which dominates and is in dominion. The spirit life is that which walks up to the covenant of the word of God. The spirit life is that which prays in the spirit. The spirit is that which is strong and rises up to have dominion over every creeping thing. The creep. The thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy. Steal your authority. Steal your victories. Kill. Destroy. Trying to reduce you. The devil lies to you to reduce you to something. My word. That you are absolutely not. That you never will be until your dying day. And then you're going to be with Jesus. Father eternally. We are awful. The lawful are awful. And God wants there to be a rising up in this time of God in your spirit. An uprising people. An uprising, rising up in your covenant. Rising up in who you are. God said, let us make man in our image. Give them authority and let them have dominion. God's never changed his mind about that. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So the Lord wants you to, you see, you're going to need to get this message and listen to it because the Lord is saying personal victories, personal victories. And then when we get together in the house of the Lord, then we band together for corporate victories. That's God's plan. So. My woman, he says here, my great army of women, Sharon, he gave me this last year. The king and his woman, they are his and they belong to him. Then he gave me Song of Solomon 6, verse 45. He, he showed me this many years ago about my woman at war. My woman at war. What is the war? The war is, the war presupposes that there is an enemy. Your enemy, the devil, Paul, the Apostle Paul was telling the church at Ephesus, your enemy, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Amen. So that's a woman at war. That's a man at war. That's a woman at war. And he gave me this, he said, is Jesus speaking to us. You are as beautiful as Terza, my love, and as comely as Jerusalem, but you are as terrible as a bandit host. You are as terrible as a bannered host. His banner over me is love. You are as terrible as a bannered host. That word terrible is awful. Awesome. He says here, turn away your flashing eyes from me, for they overcome me. When you are a woman at war, what do you war with? You war with the word. You war with the word, it is your two-edged sword. Yes. I do not war different to you. You will not war different to me. It may be different circumstances, 
but your weapons and my weapons are the same. It's a great equalizer. No one has the advantage over anybody else. God is no respecter of persons. So my war, weapons of my warfare are not carnal. They're spiritual. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are love. His word. His word. I war with the word. I will war with the Logos word, which is the written word of God, even if I don't have a Rhema word. But I will not be defeated. I will wait for the Rhema word, that which he makes alive to me, but I am not going to quit on the stuff that belongs to me. The victories that are supposed to be mine, you will not find me quitting. Until my last breath, I will be a woman at war for my covenant stuff. Amen. I will not wonder why things are not happening as they as I expect them to, and in the time I expect them to. I just live at war. And I keep striking the ground until I win. There's a scripture in the book of Kings where Elisha and this king was facing a big, big thing that coming against him and he said, there's the, sh the arrow, the arrow of victory. He said, shoot out my arrow of victory and I keep striking the ground. And the king struck three times and it said, and Elisha was angry with him and said, why did you only strike three times? Now you'll only have a partial victory. You could have defeated the enemy completely. And the next verse is, and Elisha died. Thank you, Lord. Those were his last words, a prophet of God that had come to tell the people about the goodness of God. And if we will walk in his ways, we will, we will experience victory. We will experience our God. And here was the king, dong, dong, dong. Well, I tried that three times. No, 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 no. You and I are like Abraham. We don't try something for a few times and then we give up. I will war for 25 years if I need to. Like my father Abraham. And I will not wonder. Because I'm not wandering, I will not wonder. I'm planted. I'm in authority. I'm under authority. I'm in authority. And I will find the path of faith all of my days. Yes. Yes. And so, if I don't get 100% victory, I don't come down on myself. There's no condemnation for me. My Father loves me. I don't come down on myself and go, oh, you know, I could have faithed it better. I don't walk with God like that. I don't come down on myself either. If I need to be like that father that says, help me in my unbelief, Jesus said, do you believe? Do you believe? He goes, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So, my woman at war. So now I'm going to just... Um, they overcome me. I'm overcome with love for my woman at war. My woman who are fearless. My woman who overcome. My woman who believe. My woman who follow me. I am overcome and undone at the sight of her. I mean, when I saw that, I thought, if I just be at war so he can be undone and overcome at the sight of me. That's enough for me. Uh, really, Jesus? He says, yeah, I'm absolutely overcome and undone at the sight of her. With her flashing eyes when she's terrible as a bandit host because she's rising up in her covenant and she's declaring the word of God and she's being behaving like in the image of me who's created her. Mm -hmm. 
mm. trampling upon serpents and scorpions. Mm. Nothing shall by any means. And so she might miss a few, but she's going to hit a few as yeah. well. Because she's not, I'm still a work in progress. My faith is not always up there and out there working perfectly. But I will, I'm continuing to continue because ah, he's un, overcome and undone at the sides of me when I rise up. He's like, <laughs> you are. Because we were created for authority, for victory. Amen. Yes. We were created for authority and for victory. So in all of our circumstances, we are going to be women at war. Nehemiah said to them, fight for your husbands and your wives and your children and your brethren. I'm a woman at war, how about you? Yes. I'm not warring flesh and blood. I'm not warring my husband. I'm war at war with them for victory. Amen. So now, I war with the word, but this I'm going to finish with this now. And this is uh, something that God has just really activated in me. A war with you see, you see I'm not warring so much against the devil right. he's coming against him, me but because I'm lawful yes. and because I've got my, the, his word on the matter whatever that matter may be and because he's given me a voice of victory mm. I'm kind of talking to God all the time I'm praising God yes. for the answer yes. because I saw the promise in the Bible so now I'm just continuing to praise Him. God made me that promise so I'm continuing to praise Him. But now God has given me the edge with my voice, with my heavenly language. And I know I've shared this with some of you when I was here the last time, but I want to tell you that when God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were in eternity, they did not speak English to one another. When God said, like be, He did not say it in English or in Italian or in French or in Zulu or... He spoke God talk. His talk that He talks. And on the day of Pentecost, God restored that God sound and that God talk back to us again. The ability to speak as God. 1 Corinthians 14 says, When I pray in an unknown language, I do not speak to man. I do not speak to the devil. No, 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 no. When I pray in an unknown tongue, I speak to God. I speak to God about this thing. Romans 8, 26 says, When I do not know what prayer to offer nor how to offer it worthily as I ought to pray, the Holy Spirit goes to meet my supplication. On my behalf, it says, according to the will of God, according to God. My God talk is so pure, so untainted. It bypasses my limited, finite understanding of how on earth is this promise going to come to pass in my life. How on earth is this mountain going to move? I know that I am a mountain moving being. I know that I am to speak to, I am to, I know, I know my new creatureness knows who I am. You've not heard one thing new here this morning. All 
God has done is lifted up the mirror to you and said, no, you remember who you are now. Remember who you are now. Remember who you are now. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. How do I already know these things? Because your spirit has been recreated in the image of God and you've got everything in your spirit. This vessel just comes to unlock it, unlock it, unlock it, remind you, remind you who you are. You've got to decide that you're going to deal with the devil though. I'm telling you now, you have to decide you're going to deal with the devil. Only you can decide that, that you're going to be a woman at war. And it will always be a choice whether you're going to be a woman at war or a woman defeated. Listening to the lies of the devil or rising up with the word of God and with the son. Now, how, I'll tell you how I use my heavenly language. Now I've got the promise. I know what God's word says about this situation. But there's this time period in between me receiving and believing what God's promise and what my covenant says. He says the same for me as for you. And the manifestation of it when it comes into being and how things have to change. And I don't know, I don't know, my mind cannot fathom it. Then that's when I take my yes my heavenly language that's been restored to me and I bypass my mind. My finite, partially renewed mind that cannot figure out how wonderfully God is going to work even behind the scenes where I cannot see to bring to pass those promises for my victory. I can't, I don't know how he's going to do it. I tell you, I've had some times in my life where it seemed as if the devil stole so much. And yet the Bible's promising this. My covenant says this. Lord, I know it's true. You know his word is true. The thing we have to overcome is it true for me. You have to get over that one. Yes, it's true for me. Okay, now I've got to hold that in my heart. Because Satan comes immediately to steal the word out of your heart. So I've got to hold it in my heart until the time of manifestation comes, just like Abraham. What do I do in between here? He that prays in an unknown tongue speaks not to God but to man. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries and things not obvious to the understanding. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Mysteries concerning this specific circumstance. You may have five specific circumstances going on at the same time. You're no different from me. I'm no different from you. I've got the promises for this. And I've got the promises for that. And it's always the majors. I'm telling you, and you know what that major always is? It's always financial. Unless you've got a life-threatening disease and it's that major one. You think God doesn't know that? That's why he made provision. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we are progressively becoming more and deeply intimately acquainted with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that he was so very rich, yet for our sakes he became so very poor, that through his poverty we might become enriched and abundantly supplied. Why do you think God has laid such emphasis on the anointed leaders in the body of Christ, on the fact that he doesn't want us poor no more. And my Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I'm telling you so many, why do you think Gloria Copeland would write a book on prosperity is the will of God? And then the religious people, the ones, their darling hearts that need it so much come against it, that prosperity message. My Lord, it's God. God saying the good news to the poor. Good news to the poor is that you don't have to be poor no more. God wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. God, the Spirit of God through the writer of John is saying, I wish God has got health and wealth on his mind. I'm telling you, he can, he's the most loving heavenly father. He's better than any earthly mother or father. If your child is in lack and your child is sick and your child lacks, 
I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your soul must prosper. It must prosper in your covenant and in the promises and in your covenant. Your soul must prosper. Your soul must prosper so that you can be in health and you can have an abundance. I'm telling you, even if I die poor, God will say that to me for the rest of my life. Because He loves me so much. By His stripes you were healed, Sharon. Land of milk and honey. When did it get spiritual? You try telling the Israelites when God said, I'm taking you out of captivity into a land of milk and honey. Try telling them that it's only spiritual. You'll never really see the houses and the lands and the, you know, you're not really experiencing it. It's actually just spiritual. Not try telling them that. He's a God. He hasn't changed yet. That's right. He was so his raging love for his people said, I'm going to move my mighty hand. I'm going to get my people out of Egypt. I'm going to get them into the promised land. I'm going to get them into the fullness and the fatness and the abundance. And you know how I'm going to do it? I'm going to do a series and succession of miracles for them. It's impossible for them to get them themselves out of Egypt. It's impossible for them to get themselves out of Egypt. It's impossible for them to get themselves out of Egypt. It's impossible for them to get themselves out of Egypt. I know it's impossible for them to get themselves out of Egypt. So I'm going to move my mighty hand. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times. I'm going to move my hand and move it. And I'm going to move it on their behalf. And I'm going to move it on their behalf. And I'm going to move it on their behalf. And then I'm going to move it again. And then I'm going to move and I'm going to do a series and succession of miracles for them. Until I've got them completely out of Egypt and into their promised land. And all the promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says God has given us his exceeding great. God calls his own promises precious and exceeding great. God calls his own promises that he's made us precious and exceedingly great and precious promises so that we can escape the corruption that is in the world through covetousness and lust and greed and we can become partakers of his divine nature. So he says, I'm giving you my promises so that you don't have to go after stuff the world does. Like the world does. Through covetousness, lust and greed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the poor people want everything. You don't have to be rich to be covetous. Lust, greed, more. God says, I know, I know what you have need of. I know what you have need of. Pick up your word, sword word. Open that mouth of yours and begin to talk in the realm of the spirit when you don't know what prayer to offer worthily. How to offer it as you should? Let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Yes. It says, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak with the heavenly language as the Holy Spirit gave them the appropriate words, the Amplified Bible says. But you have to believe. Yeah, I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. So, that's what I do in between these promises and the manifestation. I do two things primarily. I praise Him for the promises that He's given me. And then I pray in the Holy Ghost and I release my ancient sounds, the sounds of the ancient one for victory. So when the devil comes to lie to me, I begin, oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You promised it to me. Even if I've got to do it with tears running down my cheeks, and I've done that many times. 
and he's lying to me and his hot tormenting breath is breathing down my neck telling me you nothing's ever going to change not for you because he'll accuse you if you let him you don't need to be a perfect Christian you just need to be a believing one you're going to miss it every day like me you and you and you and you and you, you're going to miss it every day like me. But I'm not going to let my daily little faults and slips stop me from being a woman at all. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses me. For yesterday's, today's and tomorrow's sins. That's the way you have to deal with the devil. If you take his accusations, you're going to be defeated. This is not about performance, people. He wants you to be a tick-the-box performance Christian because then you're not going to be a woman at all. Because you'll feel bad about yourself every day. Every day there'll be something he can say to you about how you're not all that so that you don't rise up and be at war. Yes. And he wants you to be quiet. He wants you to shut up. Amen. Be quiet. Stop speaking that word. Because you did this and you did that and you're not all this and that and that. Then you go, oh yeah, I know, I know. The blood of Jesus takes care of that instantly. Instantly, I come boldly into his presence. The throne of grace. Praise God. Praise God. And then I begin to speak in my heavenly language. Once I hope you will not have my voice. The Lord said to me, the sin of silence at this time will be very costly for you, Sharon. Mm. Sharon, he said, the sin of silence at this time will be very costly for you. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Mm. So that means I lift up my voice like a trumpet. I declare his word. I praise him for who he is. And then I switch into my heavenly language of authority. My pure, powerful, perfect way of speaking. Untainted by my understanding. Yes, yes. But this financial thing, this financial thing. Oh. I'm talking to God about this. And then there will be times where the Holy Ghost will speak through you to the mountain in your heavenly language. Mm. There'll be a switch. Mm. Now I'm not talking only to God. I'm talking for Him. Mm. And with him. Mm. Amen. Because I'm never Amen. pray alone. Yes. The Holy Ghost is always giving me utterance. The Holy Ghost will give me utterance all the days of my life. Every time I open my mouth to pray in the Holy Ghost, He is giving me utterance. What is that utterance? Yish. Please can I just share this word with you? What this word utterance means. <laughs> This is what the word utterance. You know that scripture in Acts 4? And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is a Greek word, apothengomai. So, it means this. To utter a clear sound. To proclaim brilliancy and light. To say. To shine and make manifest by fire and rays luminousness and light mm. Ooh, yes. that's the light of God Amen. the luminousness the fire, the rays of God coming out of your mouth in its purest form of speech life and death are in the power of a tongue light, life is in your tongue when you speak in your ancient language people let me tell you the devil dreads you opening your mouth to pray in tongues do not speak like God do not speak that God took he'll tell you it's gibberish he'll tell you it's gibberish and he'll tell you you're pathetic 
how he has marginalized and minimized the power of our ancient sound when we speak as God speaks. So I'm saying with my understanding what the word says, and then I'm speaking my God talk about it. Oh, thank you, Lord.